What's up my beardos and weirdos? One topic here. And today we're taking our first dive into r slash fat logic. On that recent poll I did, this was one of the most requested videos right after Vax happened. Before we get started, as a former chubby tubby flubby guy, who now goes to the gym quite regularly and eats veggies all the time, I want to mention that I have been on both ends of the spectrum. I was in the circumstances in which I was playing too many video games, not eating enough vegetables, not going to the gym often enough, and all I had to do was recalibrate a few things and over time I was able to see gradual changes that then led me up to being <laughs> so much healthier. Being thin doesn't make you happy, but there are a heck of a lot of opportunities to be happy when you're thinner. For me, it was really hard getting out of my car. <laughs> and then I lost all the weight. Oh my gosh, getting out of the car is the easiest thing in the world now. <laughs> All right, let's jump right into it. Fat Logic is policing thin women's photos on social media because, quote, most guys are into fat girls nowadays. Hey, if you could stop posting pictures of your outfit of the day, that would be great. I've seen it twice in your Instagram and it's getting old. Nobody gives a shit that you're thin or fit. Most guys are actually into fat girls nowadays, and that's why you're single, I bet. And as if your body isn't bad enough, your face is ugly as shiz too. Skinny is not attractive. I repeat, not attractive anymore. In the olden days, being overweight actually meant you were healthy and had enough to eat. It is society that is making what you should be. I don't see how what I post on my Instagram concerns you, especially the fact that we haven't talked in six months. I'm not bragging about my body, and I haven't said anything offensive on Instagram. What's the problem here? The fusing problem is that people like you are creating this idea that skinny people are somehow gods. <laughs> no, that's not how it works. I don't want to see your body all over my newsfeed. I've been struggling with disordered eating, and it's very triggering to see someone skinny. What you're doing is unintentionally bragging. Please take the post down. What the hell, dude? This is my Instagram and my Facebook. If it concerns you, delete me. Actually, I, I'm going to delete you now. It's not my problem if you get triggered. Goodbye! Goji bowl and water for lunch was refreshing after a run in this damn humid weather. Hi, so first off, I love your blog and all the nerdy stuff you post, but could you tone it down a bit with all the fitness stuff you post? I don't really follow you for fitness content. Hey, I'm glad you like all the stuff I blog. As for the fitness stuff, I'm sorry you don't like it, but I did used to be a fitness blog before I transitioned to a personal blog. Running, yoga, and fitness are pretty important to who I am, and so I do occasionally blog about it. Sorry if you don't like it, but that's just what I like to post sometimes. I hope you continue to like the rest of the blog, though. And I understand that, but as a blogger with a growing following, you said you're at about 6k followers right now. It's your responsibility to be aware of the type of people following your blog and make sure you're not posting anything that might offend or trigger them. Again, love the blog, just not the fitness stuff. I'm very confused. I'm not posting anything triggering on my blog. I posted my lunch today and maybe a few pictures of yogis and runners weekly. It's not like I'm being offensive with what I'm doing or saying on this blog. And once again, I'm trying to be polite here, but this is my blog, so... When you post about fitness, you're rubbing it in the face of people who cannot work out and lose weight. I have a medical issue and bad knees, and my doctor said working out would actually hurt me. So when you blog about that stuff, it's very upsetting to me. I'm asking you to stop doing it or I'll have to unfollow you. Uh, look, I'm trying to be nice here, but that stuff about your doctor is just not true. Bad knees aside, you can still do something else to lose weight. Do you get triggered by runners on the sidewalk? I, I don't understand. I'm not going to stop blogging about my running and fitness, so just unfollow me, I guess. Fuse you and your thin privilege and fuse you for not seeing how your actions hurt people. Ah, uh, there it is. Alright, I don't feel bad anymore. <laughs> fuse you too. Enjoy your excuses and blaming others for your own insecurity. I'm going for a run. <laughs> I see this pic and ask myself, why can't my legs look like this? And then I realize it's because I'm not anorexic. I'm a grown ash woman. Ha <laughs> ha! Hashtag leg goals. It's a girl on a skateboard looking at her phone. Why are you so mad? <laughs> Actual cause of fat logic. Why people believe diets, quote, don't work. Toxic pills and surgery. Lifestyle change. <laughs> Actually, just smelling food and looking at food can temporarily cause you to gain weight because your body thinks you're going to eat that and it anticipates how much room it will take up. So, yeah. 
If we remember back to that great anime, Full Metal Alchemist, we remember the law of equivalent exchange. Now, if someone is making room in their body, and their body is expanding, and yet it hasn't filled with anything, it's not going to weigh more just because it's taking up a greater volume. Equivalent exchange. <laughs> you don't weigh more just for getting larger. Oops, I'm so clumsy, y'all. I tripped and fell in my doctor's office while waiting for my doctor to get to us, completely removing the BMI chart taped to the wall. Mm -hmm. It's the funniest thing, really. I somehow got the chart and even the tape bits. Evidence. Stuck on the wall afterwards off, too. And they ended up in a crushed ball at the very bottom of the trash can. I just have no idea how I managed to do that. I'm just thankful I didn't hurt myself in the protest. Hashtag so clumsy. Hashtag big whoops. Hashtag sorry not sorry. Hashtag fuse BMI. Hashtag good deed of the day. <laughs> a chart that estimates what the healthy range is and is used as a guideline to help people. You decided was discriminatory. <laughs> and a danger to your safety. <laughs> Body size is not a direct reflection of someone's energy intake. But it is, though. It's literally exactly that. Reminder that your before body is someone else's present or future body, which they already love or are attempting to get along with, so please cease and desist with the before and afters. <sighs> Forgot that celebrating your achievements isn't allowed because it might upset someone who hasn't achieved that goal. When the BMI chart says you're obese, but you know it doesn't account for muscle. It's so true. <laughs> I think according to my BMI, I'm overweight. <laughs> but I, I don't let that bother me, because I have a very low percentage of fat. And I think it's important that you recognize BMI is just a very, very generalized guideline. And that for a more accurate measurement, you may just need to go and speak to a professional, see a doctor. Oh, wait. It's fat logic. If you won't see a good... <laughs> if you won't see a doctor, good luck. Nearly all obese people are in denial about their size. 90% don't think that they have a weight problem because bigger sizes are becoming the new normal. Cancer research survey found fewer than 10% of people who are clinically obese accept that they have a serious weight problem. 11% of obese women accurately acknowledged they were obese. 7% of men correctly judged their weight, accepting they were obese. Only 10% of the 2,000 adults taking part could accurately identify the BMI threshold for obesity was between 30 and 39.9. Fewer than 10% who are clinically obese accept that they have a weight problem. Imagine you have two clients sitting in front of you. Same diet, same exercise routine, the same lab values. One has a BMI of 22, and one has a BMI of 42. If you would make different recommendations for each individual, this is rooted in weight stigma. This post from a fitness Instagram I followed is filled with some hard truths. What they say they're eating. What they're actually eating. Oh god, I used to eat so much toast. <laughs> ah, I'm really good with my coffee though. I, I don't put anything in it, so <laughs> I'm okay there. It's crazy how quickly that adds up. Obesity is not a disease. <laughs> Obesity isn't some disease that needs to be cured. Obesity is simply another form the human body has evolved to. You see it all the time in animals. Creatures that live in certain environments have adapted different specific traits unique to that environment. And that is simply what's happening to humans. The human body is adapting to our surroundings. It isn't bad, it's just evolution. We need to stop fearing change and learn to accept it. Evolution doesn't happen in individual organisms during the span of a few years. It's a series of genetic mutations selected for by the evolutionary pressures faced by a population over the course of generations. You're already butchering health science. Don't start on evolution. What's up, what's up, what's up? Fuse fat phobia. Saying you don't want to be fat is saying you don't want to look like me or any fat person. If you're balancing being overweight and healthy, that's cool. If you're obese, you're unhealthy. See you, doctor. God, I hate when Facebook shows me memories from three plus years ago. Yes, I know, I'm no longer young and slim. Fuse you, genetics. And fuse you, science, apparently. It's not that hard to lose weight. Yeah, right, because metabolism has nothing to do with it. Big Macs aren't that fusing bad for you. I eat salad. I only drink Diet Coke or water. I take a multivitamin. I walk at least a few times a week. It's not my fusing fault, I'm 470 pounds. You're not being honest about what you eat. 
I seriously doubt that anyone with a diet like that can be 300 pounds, let alone 470. Are those salads full of bacon bits? With an entire bottle of ranch on the side and a mixing bowl? Calling bullshit on this one. I only eat fast food and walk a few times a week, but it's not my fault I'm 470 pounds. Alright, that quote, I, I'm, I'm actually going to take a moment to comment on that. Uh, it's not that hard to lose weight. It's really hard to lose a lot of weight, but it's not that hard to lose a little bit of weight. And that's the thing that people try to get you to focus on, is that losing that 1% or that half a percent at a time, aiming on those tiny, tiny goals, they really add up. And I believe in every one of you that wants to make that change that you can definitely lose the weight if that's your goal. And if it's not, you know, don't yell at people for being thin. That's crazy. <laughs> All right, my beardos and weirdos, that was our first dive into r slash fat logic. What an amazing subreddit. <laughs> God, I, I love it so much. Reading through posts like this just make me remember back to the times when I was overweight and I was thinking about, gosh, what could I have possibly been doing wrong and still not recognizing that it was my diet and lifestyle that was totally killing me. <laughs> Too many video games, not enough vegetables, not enough time at the gym, and now all my life is... Too many video games, all the vegetables, all the time at the gym. You can still do what you want, as long as you balance it out with healthy stuff. So instead of playing six hours of video games, maybe I'll play two. <laughs> oh, and these videos, yeah. <laughs> so I balance out the gym, the video games, and these videos. <laughs> to any of my heavier beardos and weirdos, I love you guys. Let me know in the comments below what you think of it. I want to hear from you guys. All right, my beardos and weirdos, I love you. And we'll see you in the next video. Where we take it, one topic at a time. Roll that outro! Also want to mention I did set up a Patreon. I'm looking at investing in some new equipment. I thought you guys, hey, if you enjoy the channel, maybe you want to support it. And if you don't, that's alright too. But I wanted to give you a look at what it would look like if you did. To my regular fans, thank you so much. Every name on the board here is one of my regular fans. And my super fan, Ross Vegas. Tammy Bledsoe. Omega fans. Fred Gomez. And Ghost's Abyss. Alright, my beardos and weirdos, that was just something fun to whip together. I thought, hey, why not? If you like supporting the channel, that'd be awesome. If you just want to listen in, that's okay too. I'm making these videos for fun. I will be looking at investing in new equipment in the future. It's just taking me a bit of time to set aside that money. But if you want to support that, that'd be awesome. Let me know in the comments below what videos you want to see next. We had some awesome stories today, and I was really happy to be reading them out. The stories are linked in the description, so give those guys a shout out. They're awesome. And hopefully we'll be seeing you in the next video, where we take it one topic at a time.